Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from P.L. Combs Asian Art and Bitamount.com. Today is Friday, December 22nd, 2017. Almost Christmas here. And I wanted to share a couple, before we get into the regular stuff, I wanted to share some local pictures with you that we we put together, just a couple. Um, some of you ask, you know, where are we and, you know, that kind of thing. And here's a little information about us. Uh, this is where we live. This is Gloucester, Massachusetts. Uh, it's an island, technically. It's connected by a couple of bridges. And this is the harbor right behind our office. And my offices are right here in this building. And um, this is a pretty nice view that we get when we look out. And at Christmas time every year, they have a tradition. This is where our office is, by the way. We're in this building. We rent the left side of this building. And uh, right over here is the police station, which is kind of handy to have at times. And uh, if you come down here, this big lot right here, every year, they come in and they build a massive Christmas tree out of lobster traps. Lobstering is a huge business around here. And um, the lobstermen get together and, and they put together these traps and put them up and put buoys on them. And it's sort of a nutty tradition. It's been going on for years here. It's fun to watch them put it up every year. And um, when it's lit, this is what it looks like. It's pretty charming. People come down. They have Christmas strolls in the uh, center of town here. People walk around and go shopping. We have a lot of good stores. We have probably the best restaurants in Massachusetts. Uh, I, we do have the best restaurants in Massachusetts, better than Boston, as a matter of fact. At any rate, and folks come down and uh, um, uh, hang around here and get their pictures taken and have a lot of fun. And that's Gloucester, and that's where we are. And just as an aside, um, if we go back to this picture, if you're curious, we live over here on the back side. Back, it's called the, the back of the island. That's uh, New Hampshire, and you can't really see it, but in the distance. And um, we live over in this area. This is our neighborhood down here. This is an area called Lanesville. And uh, it's pretty nice, as you can see. We're real happy to be here. All right, and uh, so that's it. Those are the Christmas trees and um, the Christmas tree. And if you're ever in Gloucester around this time of the year, stop in and take a look at it. It's pretty cool. All right, now on to the newsletter. Last week was a pretty good week. There's some interesting stuff up. Uh, there's a lot of interesting, there's a couple of very interesting things ending this weekend. Um, so if you see this video uh, today, um, check it out. And also, we, we were able to get the uh, catalog up for the uh, January 18th sale. Um, this is the stuff that has some Marchant material in it. Um, here is the catalog for uh, Christie's in New York on the uh, 18th of January. And it's a pretty dandy looking catalog. Um, there's some nice looking things in here, some a lot of good Kang Shi pieces, as you might expect. Significant number of things from Marchants in London. They, as you may recall, they sold some things at Christie's uh, uh, last year and they're selling some more this year. And uh, this caught my eye, a lovely pair of uh, big, these uh, iron, uh, uh, red decorated, uh, iron red uh, Kang Shi jars. They're monsters, they're 24 inches tall. And uh, if you buy these kinds of things, check it out because they've got a very reasonable estimate of twenty to thirty thousand, and for a pair of twenty-four inch jars like that, it's uh, quite a deal. But at any rate, uh, if they go in that price range, uh, this is the catalog. Uh, come over to the uh, dealers and auctioneers section on the site um, up here, as you all know. Click on dealers and auctioneers, and it'll take you right to it. All right. And now on to the uh, this week. Uh, this is uh, last week's uh, 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 newsletter page. There were some nice things on here. There was this. Uh, there was a good Kang Shi plate, some other Chinese Amari and whatnot, and we're going to go through it. All right, some great stuff, actually. Um, let's see here. This, this was uh, one of the relative bargains of the week. This was a really nice 1670s uh, clobbered uh, Chinese export teapot with a nice big strong handle with a thumb 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 uh, rest on it, good looking spout, and it was in wonderful condition. And it went for a remarkably reasonable amount of money, just uh, $202. That was a really good buy for someone. I had some questions in my mind about the lid, but I think, oh, I think it's probably okay. I think it's the original lid. And uh, then this, this was, a, I think, a real bargain. This was a very elegant 15-inch Chin Lung uh, charger. Uh, beautifully done, elegant decoration, just really lovely. And uh, I thought this would do very well. And uh, I think it went for a relative bargain. <clears throat> it went for just uh, $380, um, which seemed very reasonable. This is a beautiful plate. And it uh, went for under $400, which I, I was kind of baffled by. 
And uh, then there was this. This was another good buy. This was a soft paste piece, but 18th century, clearly. And uh, nice-looking uh, stem cup. It had this sort of thick sort of a, a glaze on it. Here's a picture of the foot rim. Um, I thought this was a nifty item. Um, had some had some minor losses on the leaf tips here and there, but it's to be expected. But this was an interesting example, and they don't turn up very much. In drum roll, please. This went for thirty-seven dollars and thirty-nine cents. I have no idea why. Arthur Potts sold it. His things usually do very well. And if you saw it and thought it was going to go for a lot of money, surprise. Um, and as I always say, over and over and over, leave a bid. Always leave a bid. And this was also, I think, a pretty good buy. This was a big 18th century uh, plate. The seller had it listed as Yongshen period. I don't think it is. I just think it's probably made about 1770 or so. But a uh, very interesting plate, big. This was also about 15 inches in diameter. And it went also fairly reasonably, $440. Uh, it was a seller in London. Uh, uh, Migulari had that. And a perfectly nice charger, beautifully done. And uh, then there was this. This was another, I think, really good buy. Uh, a Morio uh, cup uh, in saucer, okay, with an, apparently another cup to it. Very good quality. Um, whoever does this, his photographs, this guy needs to work on his photographs, obviously. I think he over sharpens them in Photoshop or something because they, I, they shouldn't need this. They shouldn't look like that. But uh, very nice uh, armorial um, uh, 18th century uh, cup and saucer set. And it only went for $156. Um, absolutely a, a very reasonable buy, bargain for those. All right, things, things in December, late December, sometimes things go very inexpensively. All right, and then there was this. This was a beautiful, probably 20th century carved coral, uh, double figure, triple figure, uh, 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 sort of a root work piece uh, done in, in, in very nice quality coral, beautifully carved on, a, on, a, on a, a, probably a later stand, but nice work. And uh, this went pretty well. It brought $2,469, but the carving on it was quite excellent. It really was. And then there was this big textile. You may remember, if you're a textile buyer, you, remember, you may remember this uh, from last week. We'll put in, there's another picture of it. This was a good one. Uh, beautiful quality, nice deep red ground, lots of detail, lots of activity on it, and it was fairly large. Uh, it was several feet by about, I think, maybe four or five feet long. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought 2,700, there it is, 60 by uh, 98, I think, that, is that centimeters? Wait a minute. Um, 60 by 98 inches. This thing was huge. Okay, it was 5 by 8 feet, all right, and it brought $2,750, which is a, was a, was a good price for that, but the silks have done very well lately, and I don't think that's all unusual, all right? And then there was this very nice uh, mid-18th century, 1830 to 1850, Chinese export uh, uh, game box or desk box. Uh, very good quality. Still had its original uh, feet on it, the original wooden feet. Often these are knocked off and either, either the piece just sits flat on the ground or they add little brass ball feet to it. And uh, here's a picture of the interior. Pretty complete looking. It's a sewing set. You can see the clamp and uh, all the little tools and whatnot. Nice looking box. And it's got this fern uh, interior, the double ferns that you see on a lot of these export boxes. And uh, it, did, it did pretty well. It brought $1,295, but it's a nice piece of China trade and, uh, and, and apparently in very good condition. In condition with these early lacquer boxes is critical. All right, and then there was this. We've seen these before, these puzzle pots. They're normally done in enamels. They're normally done in, you know, Famille June or, or uh, Famille Rose, that kind of thing. And, um, or an aubergine, that's another one that turns up. Here's a blue and white one, it's rather unusual. Uh, nice example, very typical foot on this, you know, 19th century foot, uh, a little bit irregular, a little bit rough here and there. There's the fill hole in the bottom. Here's a shot of it up here. It had a little imperfection or something here, but nothing critical. And uh, it went for $571, which is sort of in the, in the mid-low range of what these can bring, a well-colored uh, one in this style, they can bring eight or nine hundred. All right, and then there was this. This was beautiful, wonderful, uh, puce decorated 18th century uh, Chin Lung period, you know, most likely uh, export plate, but very nice with a European scene in the center and meticulously painted. 
Uh, just a, a very handsome example. There's the back of it, pretty typical. Here's a detail of it, of the, uh, of the woman. She's partially nude, sitting in a landscape scene. And uh, it did very well. It brought $1,590. I was, I'm not at all surprised by that. This is a pretty rare type of plate. There's been some rare export pieces turning up. There's one coming up in a minute that we're going to look at that's just got, I think it's got about 160 watchers. And this was that um, um, piece of uh, Harado we put up last week. It's a buy it now because uh, we thought it was a very good value for someone, and someone did buy it. Um, this was a good value. It was, it was listed for 375 and it was sold um, today when uh, we went back and checked there, okay? Uh, because, you know, in an auction, you could pay easily, you know, five to 600 for this, all right? And then there was this. This was wonderful. This was a big bronze, probably early 19th century lotus sort of shaped bowl, but it was a big bowl. It was eight inches in diameter, uh, beautifully done all the way around. Here's a shot of the bottom. And uh, these metalworks have been doing increasingly uh, better and better. These sort of secondary uh, arts of uh, China, these sort of oddball uh, pieces that have always never been of much interest to a lot of people for some strange reason. And um, th this uh, sold, and it did pretty well. It went for uh, $480. A nice looking bowl. All right. And then there was this side handled uh, chocolate pot. They call these coffee pots. They're not coffee pots. They didn't drink coffee. Um, but this is a nice side handle chocolate pot, uh, beautifully decorated, Famille Rose, you know, roughly 1770 to 80, somewhere in there. Uh, but nice condition, very pretty, and the guy takes nice photographs. Um, this was Egmont Horn, and it did well. It brought $1,014. Uh, but a very nice, uh, very desirable uh, example. And then there was this odd little, um, uh, you know, sort of stem, stem uh, bottle shaped vase. Um, they had it down as Ming. I'm not so sure it was Ming. Um, the, the bottom of it looks to be more, you know, 18th, late 17th, early 18th century to me. I may be wrong, but a nice example, uh, well decorated. Uh, I don't think it was Ming though. And um, it did pretty well. It brought uh, $1,335, all right? Uh, but it was sort of a curious but, but interesting piece, nicely painted. Could be, it could be late, late Ming, but I, I don't know. My, I don't think so. Maybe wrong. All right, and then there was this. This was a beautiful Datsai uh, plate. Uh, here's the back of it with a, with, the, with, the, with a Ming mark. It's not Ming, obviously. Uh, and there's another one of it. And I thought this looked pretty good. I thought this looked like a pretty good one um, and probably okay, 18th century. Had some nicks around the rim and so forth, and uh, apparently a lot of people thought so too, because it went for $6,276. This was a fairly small plate. Uh, it's always important to pay attention to size. It was 12 centimeters in diameter, so about four inches right on the nose. A small plate, but $6,276. Uh, $6, Not bad. And then there was this rather nice, I like this. This was a, a little Kangxi uh, uh, um a tea caddy with a pewter lid that was added probably in Europe. And, uh, but nicely done with precious objects and Buddha symbols and whatnot on it. Uh, a nice little caddy, good clear aubergine there, overglazed blue enamel, so it's sort of a, a late, later Kangxi piece. And uh, I think it went very reasonably, $308. If you collect Kang Shi, this was a pretty good buy. I, I think that was a, a perfectly reasonable buy for, for a genuine piece. Not bad. And then there was this uh, pretty attractive uh, Chinese silk, uh, uh, sort of a gold bronze silk ground with a nice looking dragon on it. Um, for some odd reason, though, the seller didn't show the whole piece very well. And, I, and, I, and I'm not quite sure why, but the lots of detail, uh, very, very profusely uh, worked. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $740. But for heaven's sakes, when you, when you put up a silk, show the whole silk. Don't just show a fragment of it in one other shot. Put up five or six shots and show the back of it. It'll help your item if you're selling. And uh, then there's uh, this. Let's let this page load here. There we go. It was this big Chinese Amari uh, uh, Kangxi period bowl. This was a pretty nice looking bowl. Here's the interior of it. Uh, nicely done all the way around. Uh, very attractive, I thought. And it, it did fine. It brought $1,189, which is a pretty reasonable price for a 12-inch bowl of this quality. Um, usually big 12-inch country bowls bring a lot more 
so this was, a, I think, a very, very reasonable buy. And this was offered by our hut, the dealer over in the UK. And uh, then there was this. this. This, I thought, I commented on this last week as well. I thought this was a very nice uh, Cloisonne Moon Flask. And it had those, if you may recall, we talked about the handles a little bit. Beautifully cast, very, very well done handles of uh, dragons on the, on the neck. And um, just a very pretty example. And it was good size, too. And uh, it brought $6,300. All right. It was a 19th century one, but it was 54 centimeters tall. So about, you know, 18 or so inches in height. Nice big presentation piece for $6,300. That's not a bad buy for one of those. And it was in, I think, pretty clean condition all the way through. <clears throat> and then we're going to take a look now at some of the things that are ending this, uh, this weekend that uh, you might want to pay attention to and coming up that we're going to add to the newsletter this week. Um, one of them is this, an inscribed snuff bottle, Famille Rose, a uh, nice looking bottle, late 19th century. It's got sort of a, 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 a sort of a, a Dalguan sort of mark on it. I don't know if it's that old or not, but boy, it's a good quality bottle. It could be, could be, could be Dalguan. And uh, really well done, nice detail. And it's getting some interest, but uh, if you, if you know, inscribe uh, Famille Rose bottles like this with these scenes, pretty unusual. It's a nice snuff bottle. It's up to $330, and I suspect it'll double or triple that by the time it's done. Um, it's a nice looking thing, and and then you remember what we had there was a, a we we talked about in the Christie's video this uh, 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 pair of bronzes that was esti that were in the French sale and they were estimated at five to eight thousand dollars and um, uh, they brought th three hundred thousand okay they went way through the roof and last week when we were putting the newsletter together we came across. Um, not the same quality, not the same quality, but something pretty close. And it was only one of them. We didn't have the fellow sitting on top of the, uh, they didn't have a man sitting on top of a, an elephant and a fool lion, but a seated figure on an elephant. And this was, is a pretty nice one. And it's well done, uh, nicely decorated, 18th, early 18th century or older. Uh, here's the bottom of it, looks just the way it should. Um, and uh, it's right now, it's, it closes on Saturday, it closes tomorrow. It's got 40 bids. It's up to 6,500, and I suspect it'll go up another few thousand. Uh, but a perfectly nice bronze, nice figural bronze if you're a bronze buyer. All right, and then this. This has a lot of people talking. Uh, the people we're on Facebook with and the Chinese uh, art, uh, cl uh, collecting Chinese antiques and art and that sort of thing. They've been talking about this plate. Uh, it's a very interesting plate. Very unusual. 18th century. And uh, the decoration is, is, is most unusual. Uh, this is the kind of decoration you typically really only see in Chinese uh, paintings from this period, or on occasion, similar feelings, feeling things turn up on Beijing enamels, Peking enamel pieces on copper. But it's highly unusual. When I first saw this, I thought it was on copper. And, um, and I actually might have said that when I, when I first mentioned it. Uh, but here's the bottom of it, clearly an 18th century foot Here's the back, very typical. It's got a few minor chips in it, and it's up to $1,201, but it has something like 950 or so views and about 160 people watching it right now. So uh, I think this will do pretty well, and it closes on Sunday. All right, and then next up is this. If you like Chinese export, this is a very good quality uh, uh, Fitzhugh orange sepia, red, or sepia decorated uh, hot water dish. And the gilding is still intact on the on the on the spout and on the fill, and uh, a really nice looking, uh, very respectable looking piece. Here it is. Here's the back of it. Typical uh, circa you know 1800 uh, example, and it's up to three hundred and five dollars, uh, and it's a, a pretty nice piece. And I, I think it should do a little bit better than that. And uh, then uh, let's see what else we have over here. Um, Oh, we have the, this bronze is going to be in the newsletter this week. It's a, a rather nice one, either Song or Yuan Dynasty. And uh, then there's this. This is something that we'll put it in. We're putting it in the newsletter. It is Japanese, but it's it, the, the seller. Or there's that's why you know right there. There's Y-shaped spur marks on the back, and the decoration. He's got it listed as a, a Chin Lung dish, and uh, he's he's in the right century. He just hasn't got the right country. Um, this is a Japanese dish. You see the brown dressing, but it's a nice one. It's a very attractive one, 
And uh, he didn't show a good image of the rim, the way the rim is done. Well, there it is. And it's got that, that transitional light blue to dark blue wavy edge that you see on early, nice early pieces. And uh, here's the uh, back where they sort of just quickly decorate it. And uh, right now it's only up to about $36, but it's a very nice uh, piece of Arita if you're an Arita buyer, okay? And we looked at that. And then last is this. If you, if you like dandy uh, uh, late 19th century uh, Chinese carving and cabinets, this is a little altar cabinet that someone uh, has up. I forget the name of the seller, but it's a good old one. It, well, the second half of the 19th century, but very nice quality. Lots of nice little details on it, beautifully carved, old surface. Here's another view of it. There's another view of it. And it's got these uh, immortals going around the edges of it. It's a nice looking little cabinet and has no bids. Mud and Stuff is selling this, and it's got nine days to go. You'll be able to pick it up sometime around New Year's. You get it. It's 29 by 20 inches by 15 inches. Uh, the shipping is a little bit, uh, depending on where you are, but he's got it set fairly reasonably. It's $50 from Colorado to Massachusetts, so that's not bad. But at any rate, that's a nice little cabinet, and it would look great with a, with a, with a little bronze or a Buddha in it or something, or even put a vase in it, all right? And that's it. All right, and I want all of you to have a great Christmas and um, have a great time. We're going away. We'll be up in the mountains for uh, 10 days or so, and uh, we'll do a video next week. I'm, I'm not sure quite how we're going to do it yet, but we'll figure it out. And uh, have a wonderful holiday, and see you all next time. And uh, thanks again for visiting. Bye-bye.